Thank you, Hasni, for uh, reading the scripture portion. Uh, the scripture portion the chosen for uh, this week's sermon, it is actually suggested from our RCL. Uh, but what I'm going to speak is not from RCL, but uh, it's um, the scripture is taken from that. So that we all can go through uh, the worship calendar. We all can focus on Jesus. Uh, if you notice, since the last uh, uh, four, uh, five weeks, we are constantly meditating on the passion of Jesus Christ and various things, various incidents that happened in the life of Jesus Christ. Not only with the Sunday sermon, even uh, our Friday corporate prayers, we are discussing and meditating on uh, the events that have taken place before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So, the scripture portion it, uh, is a well-known scripture to all of us and... Uh, since Hasani read, I am not going to read it again. and But we will be focusing on various points in the scripture and we will try to explore and to understand what God wants to try to communicate to us. And the sir, title of my sermon today is Jesus' Perspective About His Cross. We all have perspectives about cross and what is the perspective of Jesus towards his own cross. That's what we are going to meditate on this morning if we read john chapter 12 verse 20 to 33 uh, the from verse 20 onwards it starts like there are jesus and all his disciples they came to jerusalem for passover festival and there are some uh, people who traveled from other parts of the world and they came to jerusalem to worship the lord <coughs> there are uh, people, the Jewish people who settled in, uh, in various parts of the world, they have written. And there are some Gentiles who are very much uh, interested and devoted in the God of Israel. And they have come to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. And among them, there are some Greeks. They, want, they found Jesus and they wanted to meet him. So when they want to meet him, first what they did was they, 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 they tried to uh, find some recommendation. So they went to Philip. And said, Philip, we would like to see Jesus. Can you please uh, uh, take us to Jesus so that he may give us some uh, special time. It is not to talk in the crowd, but a special time where the, Jesus can uh, talk to them. So why these Greeks might have uh, met Philip instead of uh, the rest of the disciples? There are 12 disciples, but they, they found uh, uh, Philip, the answer would be very simple. The name itself reveals uh, the name Philip is not a Jewish name. Probably uh, it is a Greek name. You know Alexander's father's name is Philip. So it is a Greek name. So probably Philip is someone who, was, who had um, a Jewish mother and a Greek father. So somehow they, by looking at the name itself, they found, okay, he is someone like us and one among us who can, who can relate to us. And so Manode and Jepesi, they went and tried to seek some recommendation. So Philip went and asked Andrew. Even Andrew is not a Jewish name. Andrew is also a Greek name. So these two people, they found, okay, somebody from our community have come. And they said, okay, let's take them to Jesus. And they went to Jesus and asked, uh, saying like these Greeks want to meet you and talk to you. But this is something interesting actually. Uh, that is every time Jesus, uh, whenever people come, they want to meet him. He, uh, they, he spared some time. But especially this particular event, he doesn't even give any attention to their request. He doesn't uh, tell them uh, like, okay, I will meet them or you can meet me in the evening or I don't want to meet them. <laughs> Nothing. He doesn't give any of such uh, uh, responses. Okay, uh, but uh, I was just wondering if he is not giving any responses to Greeks. So what is the point in uh, John mentioning these Greeks in the Bible, in this particular passage? What is the point? Jesus, he did not even meet to them, meet them. And he did not even talk to them. And he did not talk about them also. Nothing. They asked, they made a request. He just ignored it. Why? What is the reason? Then uh, as we are reading that, I felt uh, uh, in John chapter 12 only the answer is that if you read in John chapter 12, we find that all people, all sorts of people are mentioned in John chapter 12. There are no other scriptures in the Bible where all sorts of people are mentioned, especially in the Gospels. 
<coughs> but in this particular passage people of all sorts are mentioned okay you can see in john chapter 12 we find jesus we can we can find jesus judas the betrayer of jesus we can find 12 disciples we can find inmate friends of our jesus like lazarus martha mary we can find people who came from galilee means the people who were following jesus as he is going to uh, establish his throne or he is going for the coronation they they are the people who followed him i'm just speaking based on what we have already discussed in the previous weeks so there are people who came from galilee uh, there are people of israel there and there are jewish the hardcore jewish people of jerusalem they are there there are pilgrims who came far f- to jerusalem for passover and the residents of jerusalem and judea and uh, uh, people who witnessed jesus raising lazarus those people are there and the people who opposed to jesus also are there there are pharisees there are uh, sadducees there are priests scribes and all sorts of people are there only people that are missing there were greeks <laughs> i probably feel john wants to make sure that all people are there uh, that's why he mentioned uh, G, uh, greeks also and why am i thinking like this because it's because of uh, uh, what john wrote in chapter 12 verse 19 where he says so the pharisees said to one another you see that you are gaining nothing look the world has gone after him so all sorts of people all world was going after jesus that's what pharisees noticed and the same thing jesus john is trying to communicate by bringing this particular uh, you know a mention of this incident okay and you can find little more theological understanding behind this why, why john is trying to bring all sorts of people into the passage into the conversation as we are going to meditate uh, further okay so having said that we'll move to the th- title of my sermon that is wa- what jesus uh, what was jesus perspective about uh, his cross okay uh, Uh, yeah before that just one single point i would like to make and uh, just missed it uh, as we are thinking about these greeks why jesus did not give them time that is also an interesting thing that we have to understand as we said john wants to mention all sorts of people are present there that's the reason he brought the incidents of greek and why why jesus is not giving them time the answer would be like this from the scripture this is what it tends and it encourages me to think because jesus doesn't want to meet them personally because jesus wants greeks also should know him through his cross not directly because jesus said when yeah, in the end of uh, the same passage we read and i when i am lifted up from the earth will draw all people to myself so in a day or two jesus is going to be crucified and he is going to be lifted up and then he says when i am lifted up i am going to draw all people to myself just before that the disciples came and said see here there are some greeks they want to meet you they want to know you they want to understand you people are saying you are god people are saying you are messiah people you are you are performing so many miracles so uh, and are you the king of the jews there are so many speculations and confusion is filled the entire jerusalem is filled with that and the entire jerusalem is unstable because of those various opinions and now these greeks wants to know whether you are god or not whether you are the true messiah or not so that is what the situation there jesus doesn't want them to know him physically they don't he doesn't want them to know by flesh and blood he doesn't want them to know him uh, just like any other a uh, musician or a charismatic leader but jesus want them to know him through his cross that is the reason he did not give any attention to Uh, these greeks even as apostle paul writes in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 2 here he says that for i resolved to know nothing while i was with you except jesus christ and him crucified 
in other words paul also doesn't want to know anything about jesus historical things he doesn't in other words what we can see is paul doesn't want to put his faith on historical facts of jesus but he wants to put his faith on the crucified jesus who is a stumbling block to greeks and jesus want the greeks also should know him through the cross probably uh, this is how as a christian we can think about this particular incident uh, and understand why jesus did not give time to greeks having said that we look what is the perspective of jesus about his cross how do we look at the cross how do we look at it any any responses can we find how do we look at the cross shame for christians symbol cross is a symbol of christianity wherever we go if the cross is there that means this is a church if not is a church at least there are some christians right then symbol of hope wonderful symbol of strength great symbol of hope symbol of strength symbol of sacrifice forgiveness hmm? something symbol of love wonderful wonderful all these are great answers cross is a symbol of love forgiveness sacrifice hope strength and uh, what god has offered for all of us and that's what uh, we as christians understand but you know what there are two things there is cross and there is crucifix you know you know the difference right cross is the this is cross crucifix is somebody is on the cross jesus hanging on the cross cross by itself is abstract it is just a piece of wood it doesn't make any sense there is nothing that cross speaks but the moment jesus goes on the cross it reveals a story all that you have said it is talking about a particular story cross by itself is abstract and it doesn't speak anything but crucifix always carry a story and each person who is observing he finds a new story that's why in the history we have so many kind of crucifix pictures you know so many paintings artworks are there in the ancient times those arts are not considered as a, uh, like you know art as we are thinking those are actually theological theological compositions theologically they are drawn actually they communicate a message so arts are not used for uh, decoration those days arts are used for communication <laughs> and that's why in the ancient churches and all they used to paint all the walls and all with uh, various arts even if you go to ancient temples in india they are they already have sanskrit language they have written but still on the temples there are some pictures because through the art they are communicating a story okay so this crucifix also communicate a story cross by itself does not communicate anything but the crucifix contains a story so now what we are think, talking about is about the crucifix we are not just talking about the two pieces horizontal and vertical pieces of wood so our understanding of cross uh whatever what all you have said uh they all are talking about a kind of atonement theory okay sorry for using a big word a theological term it is atonement theory is understanding of the cross why jesus was crucified if you have a reason for it that is your atonement theory so why i said the crucifix has so many stories is because i wanted to tell you that there is more than one atonement theory don't think there is only one or only one atonement theory some say penal substitutionary atonement theory is the only christian atonement theory some say uh, victory uh, christus victor and christus victor is the only atonement theory there are some each denomination they hold one particular kind of atonement theory <coughs> but don't ever limit the atonement theories to one or two there are so many in the ancient culture if you take these pictures and all we find 
so many and every person has an atonement theory every person opinion about the cross why jesus death took place is his own atonement theory and when we talk about uh, crucifixion the words you mentioned love that is a particular kind of atonement theory that's a display of love cross and you talk about forgiveness so where jesus offered himself as a uh, ransom and he brought forgiveness that is an atonement theory hope that is talking about the victory jesus won through the cross through which we have hope that is a kind of atonement theory so uh, what all you have told me just before are your understanding or your atonement uh, theories about uh, about the cross so when we have all these kind of atonement theories sure shouldn't we have jesus atonement theory also Jesus also has his own atonement theory you know so we also should know what is atonement theory that Jesus has for himself how he how he is looking at his cross that's what we are going to discuss how did so as i said uh, these are various kinds of atonement theories so how Jesus looked at his cross he is going to be crucified and in in the same from the same passage we will take from verse 23 we can understand that jesus said and answered them the hour has come that the son of man must be glorified cross the moment we think about cross we think about shame suffering and all but jesus as he is going to be crucified he was considering his crucifixion is his glorification you know very we we uh, uh, will will explore that further uh, and then second perspective uh, jesus considered is he considered the crucifixion is the very purpose of his life the fulfillment of his life that's what he said in verse 27 now is my soul troubled and what shall i say father save me from this hour but for for this purpose i have come to this hour Jesus considered for this very purpose I have come here. For this very purpose I have come to this moment. So he considered the crucifixion as the fulfillment of his purpose. First is crucifixion is the glorification. Crucifixion is the fulfillment of his purpose. And then he can another perspective we can see that is in verse 24. Where he said, truly, truly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He considered his crucifixion is going to be a multiplication process. It, it is going to be multiplication. It's going to bring much more life into this world. And he considered himself as a grain. And through this crucifixion, death and burial and resurrection, he is going to bring many more people into life. He is using the language of the farmers. And it is the multiplication of life. That is the perspective of Jesus. And, and at last, verse 31 and 32, it says, uh, now is the judgment of the world. Now will now will the ruler of the world of this world will be casted out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This is the last perspective we can see from this passage that Jesus is considering his crucifixion as a judgment of the world. Jesus is looking at his crucifixion as casting out of the ruler of this earth or the God of this world. And he considered his crucifixion as a moment through which he is going to bring entire world and he is going to bring all the world unto himself and in which Greeks also are included. So, according to Jesus' perspective, four things mainly we can see. Number one, he considered his cross as, cross as glorification. Number two, he considered it as his ultimate purpose for which he has come. And he, ha he considered the crucifixion as a multiplication of life. And at last you can see, uh, he considered his crucifixion as judgment of the world and the casting out of the uh, evil one and bringing all the people unto himself now we'll spend few moments in these four as uh, in few aspects uh, and then we'll conclude the message so number one he considered it as glorification right what, let me ask the same question again what comes to our mind then when we look at cross 
just a bare cross what comes to our mind or at least if we are the first century person what comes to our mind when we look at the cross when we think about the cross cross primarily is about a naked man who is in shame hanging on a wood for century first century people cross is not an icon cross is a scary thing cross is a punishment cross is a shame you know in say, from 6th century onwards only cross came as a icon for christians before that it was not considered as christians you know what was the old symbol for christians fish <laughs> so, fish was the symbol not the cross fish uh, the cross replaced uh, fish when roman power empire came into the power of christians or into be bishops and all then the cross came up before that it was not there okay so uh, but when we look at the cross first thing that comes to mind is shame it is about suffering it is a symbol of roman imperialism romans they have power and they can kill anyone if anyone rebels against them what do they do in order to deter them in order to scare them about the above uh, in order to scare them so that they may not attempt any uh, rebellion against roman power what they used to do is they used to take people and crucify them and they used to put them on 10 feet at least 10 feet a uh, tall cross so that all people can see and these naked uh, people will be hanging over there after death also shamefully they will be there so in such a way they are going to scare people so it is a symbol of roman imperialism and it is also a symbol of jewish religious hatred these people hated jesus that's why even before pontius pilate was not interested to crucify jesus actually he wanted to whip him and he whipped him then the jewish leaders they cried out saying crucify him crucify him crucify him they hated jesus so much they expressed that hatred by crucifying him why they wanted him to be crucified only because shame and these things are there and uh, he claimed to be the son of god number one and number two reason is because in the scripture it is written cursed is the man who hangs on the tree so if this fellow hangs on the tree he will be he can be considered as cursed and nobody will be believing him and following him so with that they want to destroy him destroy his mission as well that's what they tried but jesus he considered it as glory you know this particular image the picture we are seeing this was there in the early church actually they considered the crucifixion of jesus as jesus going on to the cross and ruling in many many crucifixions we can find the thorn of uh, sorry uh, crown of thorns but here they put the real crown because they wanted to communicate jesus is ruling from the cross he is it is not about shame it is about victory jesus got victory over the uh, on the cross and jesus considered himself as he is going to jerusalem and he is going to be glorified and this is the coronation jesus was thinking about and the disciples thought another kind of coronation and the people followed him they thought jesus is going to bring more violence and establish his uh, kingdom and jesus is the only, why the cross of jesus is different from the other crosses that's something very important for us to understand of course during the, res- the resurrection day we are going to discuss more i don't want to reveal share my message now itself <laughs> okay but one point i would like to share uh, on all the crosses wherever people are crucified there are robbers and thieves uh, revolutionaries they have been crucified but none of them were crucified with this title i n r i that is in uh, latin uh, it says jesus nazareth rex uh, idiorum in english jesus of nazareth king of jews you know how, how it came into the mind of pilate we don't know uh, in order to mark only he might have taken that and he put that what he put jesus nazareth king of jews and if you read book of luke you will find the pharisees and sadducees were disappointed by that 
Jesus was killed already. He was crucified and killed. They, they are not satisfied with that. So they went back to Pilate asking, you put this boat, please remove it. You change it otherwise. Change it to like, he claimed as the Jesus Nazareth king of, king of Jews. He claimed himself to be the king of Jews. That's how you, change, you have to change it. They asked him. But what did Pilate do? <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. Whatever I have done, I have done. So Jesus is the only one who died as a king. There are no people who died with a crown. Not just with a crown. With a proper description saying like, King of the Jews. You know, there was already a king. If you're claiming somebody uh, as a king during the Roman rule is, uh, what we call it, uh, Suddenly, I forgot the word. Deshadroham under the other. Sedition. Claiming himself to be king of Jews, a king during the Roman power, is sedition. Right? There, but there is only, there is another king. King Herod is there in uh, Judea, right? What about that? He is a king because Caesar made him a king. That's why he is a king. And here comes another king who is wearing the crown, not just crown. Roman power itself has given the declaration he is the king of the Jews, not approving. They did not have the intention to approve him as a king, but they put it. <laughs> and he died as a king. Okay. So Jesus considered itself as a coronation. The same thing happened. Pontius Pilate who condemned him. To be crucified, he himself acknowledged saying, Jesus Nazareth, who is the king of Jews. What is the question asked by Pontius Pilate? Are you the king? Jesus said, as you say, yeah, I am. And the conversation went in different direction. But at last, who put the board? Pilate, you are the king of the Jews. That's what Pilate said. What did uh, Sadducees ask? Are you the Messiah? Or in other words, king of the Jews? He said, yes, I am. They tore their clothes. And what happened at the end? <laughs> he is the king of the Jews. So Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus considered it as glory. He did not consider it as shame. And you know one thing? Let me ask you. How many of you feel Jesus is the king of your life? Do you feel Jesus is the king of your life? Where is he ruling from? What is the throne of Jesus that captured your heart or your mind? Is it great white throne or is it golden throne where Jesus was sitting that captured your heart? Or it is a cross that captured your heart where you, where you have given your life to this king. How all of us have changed? Are we changed looking at the throne, golden throne, or looking at the cross? What comes to our mind the moment we talk about Jesus and he is the king of our life? Is it a throne or the cross? This is what I can tell my brethren. Millions of people in this world, they are the subjects of Jesus. And Jesus is ruling in their hearts, not from a golden throne, but from the cross. Isn't it? It is true in my life and I believe it is true in your life as well. He is sitting on his glory on the cross and he is ruling us from the cross. And having said that, let's go to the next thing. Judge, Jesus considered his crucifixion as a judgment of the world. Okay, And um, Cain killed his brother and he went and built a city. And established civilization. And this civilization completely based on violence. You know, Cain built and he became a violent man. Right after Cain, who comes, you know? Another violent man comes. His name is Lamech. His great, great, great grandson of, his great grandson of Cain. This man comes and says, if Cain is avenged for seven times, I will be avenging seventy times seven. Such a violence he, he, he wanted to execute. And he I don't know what these people did. He is the violent character we can find after Cain. And you know who is he? He is the father of Methuselah. 
Methuselah is the father uh, father of Noah, right? In, within two generations, it happened. Okay, so this violent man is there within two generations. Great flood took place. You know what the scripture says before the great flood? The earth was full of sin. No, the scripture says the earth was full of violence. That is the word scripture uses in any translation you take. Earth was full of violence. So Cain he built his city. The world it went till the, it it was full of violence. Eleme came within two generations. What happened? Entire humanity has to be wiped off. And then new generation of people again have come. But however, even the new generation also is full of violation. All kingdoms of this world are established on violation, violence. You know, can you recognize any one kingdom that was not established on violence? Look at our own nation also. We are also established on violence. It can be British violence. It can be other uh, social violences that are taking place. Every nation established on violence. And there are two institutes which are so very powerfully managing all these violence. You know, those two institutes are religion and then politics. These are the two institutes that are running the world from the beginning, from the city that Cain started. Everywhere you talk, every history you take, okay? When you read, the wars have taken place because of any one of these reasons, either because of politics or because of religion. And all the violence took place because of these two things. Some And these two combination is a disaster actually. That is the most disastrous combination in the world if religion and politics come together and uh, these are the two successful um, uh, institutes that handled power and they executed violence and um, they have destroyed the world and even now the world is being run by them the world is completely founded on them and if you look at the story of Jesus, and these two institutes only, they condemned Jesus as well. You know the story very well. Caiaphas, the high priest who condemned Jesus, he is representing entire religious world. He said, when Jesus claimed himself as Messiah, he said, blasphemy. In the name of blasphemy, he condemned Jesus to death. Pilate, calling it sedition, Jesus claimed himself to be the king of the Jews. And he, he declared him as, um, he declared it as sedition and he condemned him to the death. So here Pilate and Caiaphas Two humans are representing two systems. One is Jewish religious system. The other one is Roman imperialism. These two politics and religion, they have come together and they condemned Jesus. And Jesus considered this as the judgment of the world. How, how the crucifixion of Jesus, how the condemning of Jesus becomes the judgment of the world? The answer is this. These two institutes, they have promised to entire humanity that they will maintain peace. These two institutes, they promised and they take the control of people saying they will execute justice. These two institutes have taken the representation of entire humanity and they said they will keep everything just and they will, they will be honest and they will equally treat people and they will execute justice. Is it not? The religion, what is the main theme in the religion, all the religions that they speak? Justice for all people. What is the political leader's main, uh, main theme as they speak? Justice for all people. And these two societies, these two institutes have come and openly said they are taking the responsibility for honesty, and justice in this world and here comes these two society institutes 
they unjustly condemn Jesus in which they are already judged they are not the representatives of justice they are the representatives representatives of injustice they are the representatives of uh, violence they are not the representatives of peace so as they condemned jesus as the judge jesus has condemned and these two institutes are condemned these two institutes are judged as corrupt these two institutes are judged as unjust that's how jesus judged these two institutes jesus was hanged on the cross naked but he stripped the systems naked he stripped them naked where their injustice their uh, their uh, what what we call uh, um, the unjust the, uh, the injustice they are executing and the corruption it has been exposed when they condemned the innocent son of man jesus that's why apostle paul writes in colossians chapter 2 verse 15 and he says and having disarmed the powers and authorities he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross that's how jesus overcame them uh, let's move forward and the next Jesus said uh, this his crucifixion is going to be the casting out of the ruler of this world and uh, behind every human violence that we are seeing in this world behind all the rulers and principalities there are some spiritual forces that are working and these spiritual forces are making all the violence to happen in this world and jesus called them ruler of the world and apostle paul called them as god of this age from the beginning the devil tried to uh, the devil tried to stop the ministry of jesus because devil knows if the moment jesus comes to the cross he is going to be casted out and uh, he devil tried in the wilderness to, so to sabotage the the ministry of jesus but he was defeated and then how how the devil is casted out that we need to understand because the devil is the one who is behind all the violence as we said he does that with two things number one is accusation the devil is ruling the world and he does that with accusation and then violence with these two things the devil is ruling the world when it came to the crowd, um, what happens is when accusation and violence come together the violence increases more and more he brings accusations about each other one another he brings them so that we may fight amongst ourselves that's how he is building more and more violence in this world but when it comes to the story of jesus they will brought the same accusations against jesus but jesus did not listen to them and they will brought the same violence against jesus but he did not avenge them back jesus did not reflect the same what the devil was doing in doing that he put end to violence previously nobody knows if anybody anyone hits you have to hit back that is the justice if anyone hits forgive that is the justice jesus taught and he has shown through crucifixion till jesus come the world does not know that forgiveness is the solution for violence all were fighting you know what we are seeing in our own world now the wars that are taking place you killed 10 people from us and we kill 100 people see thousands of people are being killed why because they could not see justice beyond violence for them justice is executed you took 10 from me i'm i'm going to take 100 from you that is the justice they took they understood and that is the same mantra devil is using throughout history and when it came to jesus jesus is not doing the same you unjustly you condemn me and you are killing me but you know what i'm going to forgive you that's what the message of pentecost jesus when rose again from the dead what is the first word jesus said you know 
peace be with you <laughs> don't be worried you have killed me okay it's okay don't be worried peace be with you i am not going to take my vengeance old testament says vengeance belongs to the lord and here he comes and says i am not going to take vengeance because i want to put an end to all this violence i am with this i am putting an end to all the accusations that are you that are used by the devil to bring violence in this world jesus absorbed all the accusations and violence and through which he disarmed the devil with forgiveness and the third thing is jesus said that he will draw all people to himself so have we read in john chapter 12 there are greeks Uh, all people are mentioned at least these 12 greeks are i mean greeks are there and jesus did not speak to them because he wants them also to know him through the cross that's the reason he did not mention uh, and through the cross the unity has been brought into this world you know we all know the incidents like pentecost babylon is a incident uh, incident where people are divided all are separated because of the confusion of the language and pentecost is the example pentecost is the event where all people have come together while they are worshiping there are uh, luke writes there are people of all languages in that place and all of them heard in their own language which means all of them are communicated in their own language all of them were brought together and um, apostle paul also speaks about the mystery Uh, the mystery paul speaks about in ephesians is that god united jews and gentiles and brought them together in christ through the church and ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 it says the mystery that uh, sorry the mystery is that through the gospel the gentiles are heirs together with israel members together of one body and sharers together in the promise of christ jesus so through the cross crowd jesus broke down the walls of division between jew and gentile and he brought all people together as one people that's why in the body of christ we have people of all languages people of all cultures we people of all uh, regions and people from all religions all are here in the church so through the cross god united all people unto himself and not only that if revelation chapter 7 verse 9 it says after this i looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation tribe people and language standing before the throne and before the lamb they were wearing white robes uh, and were holding palm branches in their hands here again we can see jesus brought all people together he said that he is looking at the cross as he being lifted up when he is being lifted up he is going to bring all people unto himself so he judged the world he casted out the ruler of this world and he brought all people unto himself which happened that day and uh, another example we could see on the pentecost and then we can see in the church he brought all of us together and in the fullness of the kingdom he we are going to see that again so this is the perspective of jesus when he look at his cross this is the atonement theory of jesus through the cross he is going to accomplish these three and having said that he challenged us with one thing and he said who ever follows me let him carry his cross and follow me he challenged you and me when we carry the cross victory is ours because the cross is not symbol of shame anymore because jesus is ruling on the cross ruling from the cross the cross is a symbol of victory because jesus is ruling from the cross the cross is the biggest symbol of uh, peace because jesus is in the cross the cross is a symbol of uh, healing because jesus was bled on the cross so through the cross he accomplished all this and he asked us to carry our own crosses when we talk about our carrying our own crosses pravin you spoke so much about violence in the society violence in the countries violence in the history you said what is it we are not of people we are not doing all that i know you may not be waging war against another country now but you may be waging war against your own in your own family 
you may be waging war in your own circle of friends in your own office it can be in the church in our own marriages it can be there here we may not be using nuclear weapons but we will be using even powerful weapons called words we may not be using the, all those uh, uh, you know bunkers and all to <laughs> break things we just need a simple silence silence is enough to wage a war in the family silence is enough to wage war in the uh, friendship it can be in the church and this silence is don't think silence is, i'm just silent silence is violence um it is married people know that isn't it and all who have friends also know that <laughs> when we have an issue if the other person is not speaking that is the biggest violence can be done <laughs> if you have an issue go talk okay so silence is the biggest violence that we can do in the family in the relationships in the friendships anywhere so with that also will be waging war so my message don't think oh it's only on a historical perspective on that it doesn't make anything so i'm not uh, doing any violence so i'm free no let me tell you my brother we all are included in that whom did whom did do you think jesus judged uh, on the cross he said judgment of the world who is in the world you and me we all were doing what caiaphas and uh, pontius pilate did they did in their position we do that in our own positions in our own families and in other ways many other things we do that so he judged all of us in that also okay having said that jesus challenged us to carry the cross but unfortunately through the history also we can see we christians we fail to carry the cross on our shoulders but we successfully carried the cross on the flags sorry we did not carry the cross on our shoulders we carried the cross on the flags when we carry the cross on the shoulders love peace harmony joy uh, kingdom of god will be the experience of the people but when we carry the cross on the flags do you know what am i talking about carrying the cross on the flags exactly 11 centuries after jesus crucifixion and resurrection christian crusade started they put the cross on the flag and they killed millions of people historically i'm talking crusade you ask any muslim in the middle east they will tell the stories of what cross on the flag did jesus challenged us to cross, carry the cross on the shoulders not on the flag killed millions of people ladies children everyone brutally are killed you know majority who are the majority of them priests church priests they were leading the army in the first crusade which was the most successful i don't know what is the second crusade teenagers teenagers led the crusade but unfortunately they could not be succeeded but they also executed violence carrying the cross on the flags jesus challenged us to carry the cross on our shoulders not on our flags you know what we christians also sometimes we carry the cross on the flag we may not be taking a sword or gun and go and kill people we take something called scripture we use scripture to judge people isn't it happening we use scripture to condemn people we use scripture to, to, to tell the other person that he is the shit in the world when the scripture says he is the masterpiece of god we use the same bible you know uh, let me tell you this last thing please forgive me for saying but most of the people who ever say and will be disappointed with others no you are not like this spiritually you are not like this are you supposed to be like that you supposed to be like that scripture says this you are not doing it can anything good come from csi huh i'm just <laughs> saying a statement in the telugu states okay from this church nothing good comes from this community nothing good comes Uh, i know you sometimes from these caste people from where will they get good nothing 
they are uneducated community or using the scripture they don't even know the scripture how will be they uh, be good if any children were found a uh, teenager found drunk they say eh, their parents do they don't have family prayer in their house they don't even read scripture together they don't pray why why will not children will become like that in a judgmental tone i am telling so we also carry the cross on the flag we may not be carrying guns but we carry the bible and we say see here it is written you are not doing it and we judge them directly jesus said he challenged us to carry the cross when we carry the cross we won't do that we tell i know we all are going through this we all are sinners we all have weaknesses we all are standing at the same ground that is at the foot of jesus christ in such a way we gather all people just like jesus we bring all of them together to the cross so if your words are bringing people to the cross that means you are carrying the cross on your shoulder if your word are condemning the hearts of the people and uh, you know, uh, chasing them away from the church chasing them away from prayer or spiritual things that means you are carrying the cross on your flag which brings violence and which uh, has been already destroyed by jesus that is not the way of the kingdom so having said that in conclusion the, uh, according to jesus the cross which was a symbol of shame and suffering became the throne of jesus christ jesus conquered the world from the cross and he is ruling and judging the world from the cross the ruler of this world cast out by by the cross of jesus and the meaning of the cross changed from shame to glory and jesus judged the world hanging on the cross and he challenged his people to carry the same cross may the lord grant his grace so that we may be the followers of jesus carrying our own cross thank you